Hey everyone, it's Jules. Welcome to All Things Iceland, the place to get the inside scoop on Icelandic nature, history, culture, and language. This is a very special video that I've wanted to share for quite some time, but kind of true to myself, I am all about making sure that I have really tested out something and made sure that it has worked for me before sharing it with other people, just so that I can confidently say like, this is the thing that changed my life. And basically what I'm sharing with you today, these different tricks, tips, you know, whatever you want to call them, that basically have helped me to stay happy, stay content all throughout Iceland's long, dark winters is, is huge. It's a big, big factor in why I have felt so comfortable with living here and and honestly going from surviving to thriving. And as my thumbnail says, I needed this to survive. That is not a joke. That is not me trying to do clickbait. It was really about the fact that I was in this really dark place where I was like, Gunnar had bought me a sad lamp, meaning a lamp that, you know, kind of mimics daylight, but it just wasn't giving me the effect that I needed. And I just was like, how am I gonna get through this? Like I love my husband, I love that I've come to this new country and I'm experiencing all this, like these awesome adventures. But this dark, long winter stuff is just, it's a lot. And I felt overwhelmed. And it felt like I was in a survival mode that made me fear winter. And the type of darkness, to give you an example, is like the shortest day, at least in the south of Iceland, because in the north it's worse, but in the south of Iceland, the shortest day is when the sun basically comes up at 11 and it sets at around three. So it's around four hours of daylight, but when it's supposed to be that the days are getting longer again they're creeping so slowly <laughs> and it's just like ah, this is so dark and even though i had visited iceland in the winter plenty of times it's very different when you live here at least it's so in my experience and just to be completely honest that first winter made me dread winter because I just felt like the darkness was closing in on me and I'm normally a very happy person in New York City of course I had times during the winter where I felt like oh this kind of sucks but Iceland's a more of extreme place and I wasn't prepared for how to deal with winter in a way that suited me it made me think of like oh my gosh next winter is gonna come fast because summer around here is not that long and living in a state of fear about the future is never a positive way to be it just causes anxiety and stress and all these different things wreaks havoc on your body so i knew that i needed to figure something out i needed i needed to go from surviving to thriving and what i'm going to be sharing with you the six things in this video are what helped me when i do them routinely throughout the winter that have gotten me to a state of thriving to being content to being happy and i'm not saying that every second of every day i'm like winter no <laughs> i definitely have my days where it's just like oh that was annoying or whatever but i find myself being able to stabilize back to this happy place and the things i'm going to mention in this video do not contain consumption of caffeine of any kind i don't drink coffee i don't drink tea i just drink water a whole lot of water i mean the water here is amazing and delicious and i also am not going to be talking about using any type of lamp like a sad lamp nor am I gonna be talking about using any type of medication like antidepressants. In my opinion, there's nothing wrong with those things if you need them. I'm just saying from my experience and what I plan to share with you today, that's helped me and my brain <laughs> to stay stable and happy are just without those. And the fact that I can say to you that what I'm going to talk about has been successfully helping me throughout the last three consecutive winters is huge. I just hope that this is helpful information for you. Just know that I'm not a doctor or a medical professional and this is not medical advice. This is just me sharing my experience in the hope that someone feels like, hey, this is something I'd like to try. So let's just jump into the first one, which is movement. Movement, exercise, whatever you want to call it. For me, moving my body enough that I'm releasing dopamine, the hormone in my brain that gives me this 
good feeling, this happy, content feeling has definitely made an impact on how stable and happy I feel throughout the long dark winters. And movement and exercise looks different for everybody. Personally, I like to do yoga. I am not very good at it, but I like the way that it stretches me. I also really enjoy cycling. We have bikes for outside, but of course, wintertime can mean that it's really icy here in Iceland. Go figure the name. <laughs> and so you'd have to have like winter tires with spikes in them and things. And I don't have that. So we have an indoor stationary bike and I use that and it's really great for me to just get on it, especially on days where going outside is not maybe the most fun because it's like a snowstorm, super, super windy or anything of that nature. It doesn't have to be in a really intense workout. Of course it is nice to get a sweat every once in a while, but really just like moving my body, keeping it active. And of course when the weather is decent, I like to go for a walk outside. And going out for a walk is, in my opinion, one of the most important things you can do when it comes to long, dark winters because obviously there's shorter days, so there's less time to kind of get a chance to appreciate the beauty that is around you if you're lucky to be in a place where there's a lot of nature, that's awesome. But if you, even if you're just in a concrete jungle, being able to get out, get some fresh air, get out of the confines of where you live. And for me, that definitely has been the case that regularly, so every day I try my best to do something. Of course, there are some days where I'm a little bit lazy, but I don't let that become a habit because I know that moving my body has such a positive impact on my mental well-being, and it can snap me out of feeling like I'm in a funk, which is awesome. Number two is a game changer for me for winter. And this has to do with my skin. So I am of the belief that when you look good, you feel good. And I'm talking about the base level, like not having on makeup, looking good, you know, and of course there's nothing wrong with makeup. I wear it, I like my eyeshadow and eyeliner and everything else. But when I wash my face and I see the state of my skin when it's freshly clean, I want to feel good about that because that's my base of what I'm working off of. If I want to wear makeup or if I just want to go out and not do that. And since high school, I've had the issue of these dry patches, especially on my cheeks where they're the driest and some other parts of my body. And they're so dull that like, it felt like no amount of moisturizer I was putting on my face or whatever I was doing was helping. And this was really, hard for me during the winter because every time I look in the mirror, I see that my face is going through this. I'd be embarrassed about someone seeing that on my face and I couldn't really cover it up. There'd always just be like a, this dull spot somewhere. So it's funny to me that coming to Iceland is where I ended up finding the solution for this, but it was really out of necessity. So it can be very, very dry here and it can be lots of wind storms and your skin just takes a beating. And also I was getting used to different water than where I had lived previously. So there's just a whole lot of different dynamics that my skin was having to deal with and it wasn't happy. So of course I've had this mentality around winter being sucky for my skin because I just didn't have the right things that worked for me. And the game changer for my skin has been this right here. So it's called Bliss Healing Balm and it's by Ana Rosa Skincare. And this, like I mentioned, like I tried so many other things and I'm so grateful that I was introduced to this product which I've been using for almost a year because my skin has just been like, thank you. And when I look in the mirror and it's winter time, and I know I'm gonna be going out, you know, outside to go hike a mountain or go for a walk and maybe it's a bit windy. I don't feel like, oh no, my poor skin looks horrible and I'm gonna suffer and I'm just gonna feel awful about myself because the first thing people see, which is my face, is gonna have these dull patches on it. Well, not with this. And uh, just to show you kind of like what it looks like, so I've been using this for a few months and this is the 1.7 ounce uh, container. So it's the largest one that she has. I've been using it for months and there's still a lot left because a lot goes a long way. And just like consistency wise, just to kind of give you an idea, hopefully that focuses. Uh, but like on my hand, it's just really, really smooth and it just like 
goes right down to the skin. I like it a lot and in the winter time, I use it twice a day if needed. So like, if I'm seeing that for whatever reason, I had like a, like a long time I spent outside and I came home, washed my face, I'll put it on. But normally like my routine, which by the way, if you want me to do a routine of like my skincare in Iceland during winter, let me know in the comments and maybe I can make a full video about that because there's other parts to this, but this has been like the best thing for my skin during winter. And if you're anything like me where your skin gets more drier and just like sad looking <laughs> during winter, this will help. And it says here that it's an anti-inflammatory healing balm and it's made with wild Icelandic herbs. Like she goes out during the summertime and hand picks herbs in Iceland to make things like this. And so it powerfully smooths rashes, sores, cracks, and skin irritations. Many different individuals can find it useful for sure. I mean, don't have to just take my word for it on her website there are reviews and i'd actually reached out to Anna Rosa about the her bliss healing bomb <laughs> to be like hey um i really found this so helpful for me and i'm planning to tell my audience about it and she was like great we can offer your audience 10 percent off of the bliss healing bomb and i was like what that's amazing so so if you use the link below in the description box and the code Iceland, you can get 10% off Bliss Healing Balm until March 7th. So definitely use this. It can be used for adults, children, whoever. Good enough to use it because he has a little bit of eczema, he gets on his nose sometimes. And it's just been awesome. And I, I really, like I mentioned, I'm just, I'm more grateful than anything and grateful that I can share that I found something that worked for me because for most of my life, I've been struggling with those dry patches happening in the winter time and I've just dreaded winter. But now I have something to maintain my skin and keep it nice and healthy and moisture and for my well-being in general this has been so great because I feel confident when I go out that my skin looks as best as it can I mean it's not perfect but it's doing its thing number three is one that I stumbled upon by accident but the impact is through the roof amazing for me and it is literally like tricking my brain so in our apartment we're lucky that we have a lot of light but that's because it's daylight out right now. When the sun goes down, it is very dark in this main room, which is the biggest space in our apartment. And the darkness, like I mentioned, could be, feel so overwhelming. And even though we do have lights in the ceilings, it's just something about like looking out the window and seeing like this intense darkness. So Goodman and I went to Ikea during the holidays, during like Christmas time a few years ago. And I saw these stars, these big stars that were on display. And I was like, oh, those are so cute. We should get some. And the intention was just like holiday decorations. So we're like, yeah, okay, let's just see how that looks. And so it came home, put them in the windows, the biggest windows that we have, and turned them on at nighttime. And they were like really cute, but I noticed like, I felt really happy and like so much better when these lights were on. Maybe because it reminds me of like a Christmassy feeling, I don't know. But when Christmas is over, we're still using these lights and I'm like, yeah, that feels like, something about this feels really nice. So for me, those lights feel like there is light shining in from the windows to the apartment. And they do brighten up this main room at night, so it's also kind of like a night light when we have to leave the bedroom to go to the bathroom, which is nice, so we don't trip on anything. But in terms of the fact that my brain associates light coming through, especially these windows, with like brightness and daylight, whatever else, these specific lights have, for some reason, given me that same kind of like, oh, it's not that dark. Oh, it's not that bad outside. My brain kind of thinks of like, when we look at the window, we just don't, we don't see like the darkness behind the lights, but rather just those nice lights. And maybe because it also gives me like a cozy feeling. On top of that, we also have candles and blankets that we can like snuggle up together and stuff of that nature. But those lights have had the biggest impact. And I've been telling people that I know, I'm like, hey, if you think it's really dark and I feel like it gets you and your apartment feels dark or your home feels dark, put some lights in your windows that you have up even after the holiday. So it don't have to be necessarily holiday lights, but ones that do kind of give this feeling of light kind of shining in through the window. And like I said, I've been doing this for a couple of years and whenever I turn off the lights at night, I sometimes feel this kind of like, ugh, feeling. Like it's almost like, oh, 
that does not feel good. <laughs> so for me, I do attribute this light with having a positive impact on my mental state and being happy. Number four is having a passion project. So all things Iceland started out as a passion project for me. And it was during winter time, even though I was working a full-time job, but I'd been listening to a lot of podcasts and I really did not hear like a podcast about Iceland that had the components in it that my podcast has. So I just decided to start one, and which means that like interviews, learning about the Icelandic language, learning Icelandic phrases, really interesting tidbits about the country. So my experience, of course, and then later on after creating the podcast, I created this YouTube channel, all coming from just the excitement of having something to do, a project that really got me going and I was looking forward to coming home from work and getting into and figuring out. And for me, you know, I wasn't expecting to really like launch off and, and grow this thing that much. I was just kind of like, this seems like fun. <laughs> and so it could be for any person where you're not like making anything out of it, meaning like you don't shoot YouTube videos, but maybe you're like knitting, maybe you like to paint, maybe you like to do puzzles, whatever it might be. Maybe you're into CrossFit. I mean, it's just like having something that you're passionate about to look forward to, especially in the winter, I believe makes your brain think that like, yeah, I'm not even paying attention to the darkness. Like, it's, I know it's dark, but that's not my concern. My mind is not idle, so I'm not sitting there thinking about all well, the, the terrible things. Rather, I'm like, yes, this is like cool thing that I'm working on, I'm super excited about it. And it could be just for your own personal pleasure. And that is essentially, like I mentioned, how all things Iceland started. It was my, my personal pleasure and kind of just like sharing. And I'm grateful that it's been continuously growing. So thank you to all of you who out there who watch. <laughs> and if you are enjoying this video, definitely make sure you subscribe and you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future ones. But like I mentioned, it's all about being excited about it. Number five is I feel like I can't talk about living in a place that doesn't have a lot of daylight during the winter without talking about supplements. <laughs> so I am a plant-based eater, vegan if you wanna call it that, and I take, of course, vitamin D. I take a, a vegan version of vitamin D, which is from this company called Vegetology. Just having that supplement, because I have more melanated skin than a lot of the people that live in Iceland. So even during the summer, when there is 24-hour daylight, I can't absorb enough <laughs> of the vitamin D from the sun in order for it to be sufficient for my needs or you know in a winter time I definitely can't so having that has had a very positive impact on my brain its functionality my body's functionality of course there are other nutrients and vitamins that I have a supplement like B12 which I use nutritional yeast for but for me, just knowing, like getting my blood tested and knowing what I was deficient in and working on those things has stepped in my ability to be a stable, happy person. Because I did notice when I wasn't getting enough vitamin D, like I would get sick more often, which makes me very sad and I associate winter with being ill. And I've heard about links between vitamin D, your immune system. So I've been taking a lot of vitamin D. <laughs> so that was key is finding products that work well with my body and my lifestyle and making sure that my levels of nutrients were up to par or even a little bit over. So I can give my body and my brain the best chance at being functional so I can be happy. So last but certainly not least is number six and that has to do with gratefulness. I have been hearing about like grateful lists and all that jazz over the years and at first I was just like, okay, I'm a grateful person, all right? Like, why do I need to write this down? Like, is it that big of a deal? Yeah, actually, it makes a big difference. <laughs> and I'm so surprised at that, that I, and I started this the second winter because I heard about it and a friend was like, hey, you know, I also struggle sometimes with being sad during winter and just kind of reminding my brain and setting a positive tone in the day by writing down five things I'm thankful for made a huge difference in her life and I was just like, all right, I gotta try, like why not? So on the bus to work in the morning, I would write out my things and I definitely noticed after about like a week, week and a half, 
that I was thinking like and feeling a lot more positive. And the day for me was just like, wow, yeah, okay. Like maybe if something was frustrating to me or even about like the darkness, things didn't seem as intense, which had been my issue previously with like this long dark winter. It was just like, oh, just, it feels so intense. Why do I, why am I living in a place that's so intense, you know? I just recommend trying it out. I don't actually write it down every day, but there are many days where I will stand in the mirror and say what I'm grateful for, which I found that to be very powerful. But there are definitely days throughout the week where I just write down what I'm grateful for and it makes me smile. It just inside makes me happy to know that there's like, I'm fortunate to have like certain people in my life, certain circumstances, things like that. And it just reminds me of the light so I don't get sucked into the darkness. And that to me has been so powerful. And hopefully you find that it helps you as well. If you found what I've shared in this video to be helpful or even just entertaining, please give this video a thumbs up and definitely share it with anyone who you think would find it helpful. I'd love to hear in the comments if you're going to try out any of these or if you already do some, or if you have some ideas yourself that you use during winter time in order for you to kind of stay happy or trick your brain, train your brain, whatever you wanna call it. So definitely let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.